starting pitching in this series, really for both teams, but we're going to focus in on the Cubs. Yeah, not just this series, but this entire homestand. Of course, all year long, the Cubs starters have, have led baseball. Now they have a 238 rotation ERA, and they've been lights out on the homestand. You see John Lester in his start against Philadelphia. Kyle Hendricks, of course, with the complete game, should have had a shutout, just missed getting it, but a brilliant performance by Kyle. The, the starters have allowed just four runs on this entire homestand. John Lackey doing his thing. That's Travis Wood. He came in a relief of Jason Hamill who had to leave because of the uh, little cramp in the hammy. And there you see the numbers 4-0, 0.89 ERA uh, through the first six games of this homestand. So let's check out our Quicken Loans Rocket Arms. Most starts allowing zero or one earned run. And the Cubs are at the top. Uh, yeah, you see Lester, Ariadne, and Hamill all there in the mix with uh, Fernandez and, and Cueto. And, and, and this stretch coming at a good time because the bat's a, a little bit dormant here of late. All right, John Lester, about 70 innings in to his season. Talked about John Lackey and the 100-inning plateau in a season. I remember Lack saying, you know, a few years back, he always felt like around the 100-inning mark is when he finally got – I guess comfortable with his with everything, you know, arm strength, curveball, everything. So, I feel like if you're able to reel off some uh, some good starts before that, before the 100 inning mark, it puts you in a good position, you know, through the rest of the year. So, uh, I've I've kind of I've kind of always felt that way. You know, it takes we're, we're bigger guys. It takes us a little bit longer to get going. And um, this year was you know fortunate enough to get off to a little bit better start than last year. And uh, as far as you know, health wise and you know result wise, so. I'm just trying to trying to pick up my load, you know, as far as uh, my spot in the rotation and and keep this train moving with uh, with these four other guys that are throwing the heck out of the ball right now. So. Kind of interesting, the 100 uh, uh, inning marker. Did you feel like when you got kind of into the June, July that you hit your stride? Yeah, I never really got too much in terms of innings pitch, but certainly uh, I, I agree with what he's talking about, about getting into the flow of the season, whether it's 100 innings or four or five starts. A lot, sometimes it just takes a while to get comfortable with the catcher, get, you know, get, to get that feeling back after spring training. Uh, but the thing about these guys is they've been there from day one. Yeah, they really have. The other thing is the only time Joe had to adjust his rotation is with off days and rain outs. Other than that, it's been just keep everybody in line yeah, and get that extra day. And because everybody has been performing so well, he has chosen not to really skip anybody. Uh, that one time he did with Hendricks because there were so many days off. Uh, but just keep passing the baton to the next guy. Everybody performing like a top of the rotation starter, one through five. All right, Kelly Crawl sat down yesterday with Kyle Hendricks, today's Cubs starter. You'll hear that conversation next.
with their Coors Light game report. Kyle Hendricks back out on the bump for the Cubs this afternoon, looking for his fourth win of the season and trying to help his team get a series victory over the Dodgers this afternoon. The young righty, very impressive his last time out. One run, complete game, and afterwards Madden said that's the kind of pitcher he thinks he can be every time out, and here's what Kyle had to say about that. Yeah, I, I believe that. I mean, I had stretches of it in the minor leagues. That's a different world. I understand that. But coming up here, you know, it, it took me a while to develop and kind of to learn the, learn the league, learn myself, honestly. So where I'm at now, I think it's just getting in that consistent mindset like I was in stretches throughout the minor leagues. Um, I feel like I'm comfortable with where I'm at, comfortable with myself and the, the type of pitcher I've kind of become right now. So just like I said, keeping it simple, uh, focus on consistency. I think I can be that guy. You mentioned getting to know the league. The Dodgers isn't a team you see all that often, but you have gotten to see them now. What will be three days in a row. How much does that help you? It helps a lot just to see uh, their approach off, off different pitchers we have. Uh, I obviously have different stuff, you know, than, than the other guys on our rotation, but you can see what their approach is if they're aggressive, patient, uh, trying to go the other way, trying to pull. Um, it's good stuff just to see and take in along with the video work you do on the side, you know, because teams can make small adjustments on you in the middle of a series. you got to be able to pick up on that. I think Dave and Ross once told me that um, the teams you see the least um, are the games he feels like you need to win the most. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know why that's his mindset, but do you understand that? Why, why would you feel that way? I understand that just because you maybe don't know as much. You're not as comfortable with them. When you're going against your in-division opponents, uh, you almost can get up for those more too. You know, you know them very well. You've pitched them these certain ways. You know how they approach you. When you don't see these teams a lot, um, you really almost have to double your focus. You know, you don't know enough about them sometimes. You have to go out there and feel more in-game stuff uh, rather than preparing beforehand. But I think we just get so used to playing teams in our division and the teams that we play a lot that sometimes you'll pass over these teams that just come in every once in a while and you can't do that in this game. I can see that. Well, a big hit for you last time at the plate. Can we see one more of those two? I'm working on it. You know, I, I hope so. I hope we can see a few more. <laughs> All right, Kelly, thank you. Good stuff with Kyle Hendricks. You see what he did in his last start on Saturday. 19-year-old Julio Urias uh, struggled in his major league debut on the big stage in the Big Apple. He went back to the minor leagues, but he has returned because Alex Wood is now on the disabled list with an elbow injury. And, J.D., he is going to start today because Kenta Maeda, the right-hander, will be pushed back one day due to a hand issue. Yeah, just a matter of time for uh, Urias be before he becomes a top flight pitcher in this league. Just 19 years of age, making a second major league start. I imagine he's going to be battling the jitters again here this afternoon as he was in his uh, first start against the Mets. But uh, it's going to be fun to watch this kid pitch. All right, Urias and Hendricks. And now our national anthem. At this time, please remain standing and join Jeff Ray as he honors America with our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting, flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the
Chicago is brought to you in part by your Chicago area and Northwest Indiana Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois. Through it all. Ford, inviting you to check out their fuel efficient lineup at your local Ford store or at localfordstores.com. And by Southwest Airlines. Transparency. Low fares. Nothing to hide. Welcome back to Wrigley Field and make sure you follow Patrick Mooney our Cubs insider all season long on CSNChicago.com presented by Nationwide's Jeff Vukovic serving the community for 38 years go to JeffVuk.com. Nationwide is on your side. Always lots to talk about with uh, Patrick let's do uh, an injury update good news uh, looks like Jason Hamill's ready to go his next turn. Uh, dealing with the cramping in the hamstring Hector Rondon seems to be OK as well unavailable with the back stiffness but uh, I know you talked to Jed Hoyer yesterday Patrick it's always scary when pitchers have any sort of issue. Yeah without a doubt I mean the way Jed put it was you're kind of one text message from your trainer away from having to completely rework your roster and maybe change the entire outlook uh, from your season and I think that's why you know, it's two full months we're going to hear this almost every day of trade speculation and I think you know the Cubs are going to have to make uh, pitching a priority I mean they put they've been invested so much in this lineup you know if this lineup isn't good enough you know it's not good enough but I do think there are lots of creative ways whether it's shortening the game with their bullpen or adding another big time starter to you know kind of find that difference in October. Big picture with John Lester. He obviously seems a lot more comfortable this year. It was not dealing with uh, the dead arm that he did last year, the weight of a big contract. But remember when he signed, there was no guarantee that the Cubs were going to be nearly as good as they were. I think Theo said it, uh, you know, either at that winter meetings or at his first press conference in Chicago that pitchers like John Lester don't sign with last place teams. And that's what the Cubs were. I mean, he showed up. Uh, in November to basically a construction site and they put on this full day long presentation you know all the way down to you know what they could do for his charity and, and stuff like that and it really I think last night you know it kind of came to life of you know a huge crowd you know chanting for him you know team with the best record in baseball and you know as he said last night when he showed up you know on opening day last year the bleachers weren't ready it was rainy and cold and now you see the Cubs as the biggest story here in baseball. And last thing we uh, often get tweets about Kyle Schwarber we occasionally get shots of him uh, in the dugout and he has been around the team especially with the new clubhouse that helps a lot otherwise he would be spending his summer in Arizona but uh, they feel good about his recovery and obviously they're taking it uh, very cautiously because they want him to be ready for spring training. Yeah he met uh, he flew to Dallas this week he met with the surgeon who performed uh, you know very in-depth procedure after a very serious uh, injury but he's said to be uh, doing well and I think you know Jed Hoyer Cubs GM put it pretty well you know for our, our TV cameraman that he's down to one crutch now so his celebrations in the dugout should be a little you know less awkward so we'll be looking for that uh, as well. All right always make sure you follow Patrick Mooney CSN Chicago dot com when we come back JD and I will have the call of the action as the Cubs try to win a series against the Dodgers Dodgers and Cubs next.
The Northsiders have rattled off seven of eight, and it's been all about the pitching this week as the Cubs go for another series win. Cubs baseball on CSN Chicago is presented by State Farm. It is a gorgeous afternoon. Wind generally blowing out. Sun is shining and it's the Dodgers and the Cubs. Game four Cubs winning two of the first three. And let's get right into the Dodger Southwest starting lineup. They have actually outscored the Cubs six to four in the series but have lost twice. Utley, Seeger, and Turner at the top. Gonzalez having a terrific trip at the game winning RBI two nights ago. Peterson, Thompson, Carl Crawford is in left. A.J. Ellis with his second consecutive start, working with 19 year old Julio Urias. Here are the Cubs defensively. Solaire, Fowler, Hayward cover the outfield. Should be a busy day for the infield with Kyle Hendricks. On the mound, so Bryant, Russell, Baez, and Rizzo will handle those duties. Miguel Montero behind the plate, and Alexis pursuing perfection, the starting pitcher, uh, the professor, the crafty righty, Kyle Hendricks, making his 10th start. A losing record, disregard that. He's pitched way better than that. 2.93 ERA. He's only allowed two home runs. An extreme ground ball pitcher, one of the highest ground ball rates in baseball, and he throws strike one 71 percent of the time. That's the second best mark. In Major League Baseball. That's his MO, get ahead and then expand. And boy, was he outstanding at doing that last time out in that complete game win. Nick Lentz back of the plate. Paul Emmel is the crew chief at first. Jim Wolf at second. Ben May filling in for Adrian Johnson is at third. Here we go. Hendricks to Utley. Fastball at 87. For a strike to get us started. Kyle faced 32 batters in that complete game through strike one to 26 of them. That's a base hit. Not hit very hard by Utley. Well, that's the other thing about Hendricks. He has induced a lot of soft contact this year. Right around league average in terms of his strikeout rate. He keeps the walks down. Good change of speeds, good movement. A lot of balls hit off the end of the bat or topped into the ground. That ball might have been caught by Dexter Fowler last year. He's playing a little deeper this year, so taking away slugging, you might occasionally give up a few bloop singles. The idea is to not give up a lot of doubles and triples. Yeah, and especially, you know, with the wind blowing out, uh, makes sense to play a little deeper. And again, you give up a single with a guy like Hendricks. On the mound, you certainly have the double play in order with, with his uh, ground ball rate. Swing and a miss by Corey Seeger. Four hits in the series, including a three run homer. We think Hector Rondon might be available today. He was feeling good this morning after sitting out last night with back stiffness. Bullpen needed as John Lester went all nine. Seeger, big strong kid, is at nine home runs. A nasty changeup. Two and two. Seventy eight degrees. West wind at nine. Bounce back to Hendricks. One to six to three. 
And the Dodgers don't have a, a, a lot of base dealers. Now, Utley, throughout the course of his career, has been an outstanding base dealer, but that's not a big part of his game anymore, and that's going to be a challenge for Dave Roberts with, with Hendricks out there. Uh, if he's not willing to start some base runners, this could be an issue for the Dodgers. Right back to Hendricks, takes his time, accurate feed. 1-6-3 and two quick outs. I always hold my breath a little bit when a pitcher has to make that throw. Seems like that's the toughest throw for some reason. I mean, that was yeah, picture well, perfect. I, yeah, sometimes what happens is you, you, you sense that double play and the adrenaline starts pumping and you hurry the throw. Yeah. Hendricks, though, that, he's not built that way. He has such a calm demeanor. He's, he's not an ounce of panic in this man. Fouled off two strikes on Turner. Uh, Joe Madden in talking to reporters before the game said not a hundred percent sure he wants to use Hector today. So one of those things where even if he's feeling better they may want to give him an extra day just to make sure. And, you know, the Cubs have been involved in a lot of blowout wins so he hasn't been used a ton as Turner went I guess or was it a call third no, I just swing a little swing all right so that's it for the Dodgers double play and a strikeout Cubs coming up Ooh, I don't know is presented by Benny's Beverage Depot. If Dexter Fowler gets a hit, Benny's Beverage Depot will donate $100 to the Greater Chicagoland Food Depository. A great statue of Ron Santo outside the ballpark. Cubs Southwest starting lineup. Four runs total in the series, but they've won two of three. Fowler, Hayward, Bryant. Chris had the game-winning homer last night. Rizzo, Soler, Russell. Baez in for Zobris, Montero catching for Kyle Hendricks. Dodgers defensively have an outfield of Crawford, Peterson, and Thompson. Third to first will go Turner, Seeger, Utley, Gonzalez. A.J. Ellis, the veteran backstop, does the catching. Alexis starting pitcher, 19-year-old Julio Urias. We're in number seven, so he made a... Uh... Uniform number switch. Or 78 in his debut. Alex Guerrero had been wearing number seven as Fowler with a little pop up and Utley can't get it. So Benny's helping out the Greater Chicago Land Food Depository with a $100 donation. It's a good idea to put a little uh, pressure on a starting pitcher early and a guy who's 19 years old making a second major league start. Probably even more so. Yeah, Alex Guerrero designated for assignment, so Arias wanted the number he wore when he was a kid, which was like last week, and that is number seven. Now Jason Hayward. The last Dodger full-time pitcher to wear a single-digit 
Bobo Newsom in 1943. Good old Bobo. Not to be confused with Bobo Holloman. Well, this kid, uh, one of the top pitching prospects in all of baseball, mature beyond his years. As you saw the numbers, is just dominating at Triple A. He's got easy 94. He is the first teenage starting pitcher to face the Chicago Cubs since Dwight Gooden in 1984. Obviously he's got a lot of poise or he wouldn't be here at this young age. He signed when he was 16. And just days after his 16th birthday there's a good breaking ball and throws both the curveball and the slider curveball probably a better pitch for him. Also has a change up. From yeah. Culiacan Mexico. Youngest player ever to participate in the futures game he was 17. And the Dodgers uh, were in Mexico scouting Yasiel Puig when they decided to take a, a side trip, and that's where they found a 15 year old Urias throwing 92 miles an hour. Red Sox thought they had him signed. Dodgers came in with a better offer. No doubt he gets off to a good start here. We'll draw comparisons to the great Fernando Valenzuela from Mexico. That great beginning with the Dodgers. Round ball to third. Turner to Utley. Safe at first because of the shift. Hayward stays out of the double play. It was more about Utley than Turner, though. Utley has so far to run to get to the base to get that feed from Turner. He doesn't really have time to plant and get a whole lot on that throw. Well, that brings up Chris Bryant. Leads the team now with 12 home runs. Last night it was his 38th homer in his 201st major league game. Round ball foul. As Bolsinger the curveballer left one in the zone for Bryant. He hit it into the shrubbery. His 38 homers in his first 201 career games. That's the most ever. For a Chicago Cup, only one player since 1901 had more homers within his first 201 games as a Cub at any point in his career, and that was Fred McGriff. 42 homers in his 195 games as a Cub, well into his major league career. The ground Turner again. This time Utley is right on the bag, and they are able to turn it, even though Bryant made it close. 5 4 3 on the double play, and we are scoreless after one.
TSN Chicago is presented by State Farm. Hey Cub fans the Cubs are hot and so are tickets to Cub games the best availability for tickets are on weekday and night games with limited tickets available on weekends throughout the summer plan now don't miss out in all the excitement here at Wrigley Field for details visit Cubs dot com. Cubs trying to take three out of four in the set Dodgers looking to end their road trip at four and three. Get out of here with a series split. Adrian Gonzalez sat out last night, game winning RBI single in the eighth inning Tuesday, and 10 out of 20 so far on this trip. Joe wanted John Lester to finish the game, and the stuff told him to let him do that. But the other factor in a one run game is Hendricks with a nice pick to get Gonzalez is at. The Dodgers had Gonzalez and Utley on the bench and Joe wanted to avoid those guys so you keep Lester in and he was able to do yeah, that. Yeah a combination of a no Ron Doan Lester really throwing the ball well dangerous lefties on the bench all factored into his decision making. And Jock Peterson the center fielder 0 for 11 so far in the series. Takes a strike. You won't see Kyle elevate too often with his fastball, even, but it worked there. That's either a scanner report pitch, and I feel like Seeger's got a hole up there, or a little bit of a miss. Did so well in his last start. I mentioned that the, the first pitch strike percentage up over 80, which is just off the charts. But he didn't spend a lot of time in the strike zone after that. And that's that's you know, throw strike one, and then he throws a lot of pitches that have the illusion of being a strike, and there's little movement out of the zone. Hitters have a very difficult time recognizing the difference between his sinker and his changeup. The weak contact we were talking about as Baez makes the play on a changeup. You're just kind of swinging at a paper airplane. Yeah, it just doesn't get there. You see it out of his hand. Most big league hitters are geared to handle the fastball, and they don't recognize that pitch. That's the thing about a real good changeup. I think a you know, curveball, the hitters will see a little bit of a hump sometimes, a slider, they're looking for that dot. Where they could recognize the slider spin change up very difficult to recognize unless you hang a bunch of them it could be a very effective weapon. Low and in on Trace Thompson. He's playing right. So Yasiel Puig started Monday has not started since he did pinch hit and lined out late last night. Fly into left center. This is Solaire. And that's it. So Kyle Hendricks picking up where he left off in his last start. Pitching well early.
today. Cub fans, we want to hear from you during tonight's ball game. Well, today's ball game, actually. Use the hashtag Cubs Talk on Twitter and be sure to follow at CSN Cubs all season long for the latest news on the boys in blue. Time now for greater coverage of baseball. It's uh, brought to you by T-Mobile. Those Red Sox are slugging five homers in a two game span. Mookie Betts last couple of nights in Baltimore. Nomar, Noma did it in 2002. Yaz yes, back in 1976. Breaking ball strike on Anthony Rizzo. There's Nomar. With uh, Oral Hershiser and Joe Davis. It's a, it's a, it's a tight booth. It's a men's warehouse in there. Yeah. One and one. So it might be the highest uh, wins above replacement booth in the, in the game. That's a good point. By the way, real happy for Joe Davis doing uh, road games, non VIN telecasts. His first year with the Dodgers, grew up in Western Michigan rooting for the Cubs. And Joe, like, Urias, 16. When he signed. No, he just looks that young. <laughs> he is young. I hope he's going to follow Vin Scully. You got to get started at a young age. That's right. In on the hands of Rizzo. Just missed the outside corner. Full count with Soler on deck. Anthony will host the cookoff for cancer event after the ball game tonight. In his foundation. There's a lot of work in the community. It's a ton of hospital visits. That aren't publicized. He's got a uh, 5K walk run in the offseason in South Florida to raise money to fight cancer. As he draws the walk to start the inning. I'd like the uh, plate appearance by Rizzo. And we work the walk and again put uh, the youngster into the stretch. Jorge Soler bounces toward right and it will be a base hit. So a 99 hopper. And the Cubs have two on with nobody out. It's kind of ironic because Soler, when he puts the ball in play, usually hits it very hard. But He hit that one with a rolled up newspaper, but he found a hole. Big chance here in the second. Addison Russell shows bunt and takes ball one low and in. Side. Can you even fathom being 19 and pitching at this level? No, it's I just unheard of cannot. these days. Yeah, it's, it's, 
It's rarely happened, right? You know, the long history of the game, there just haven't been that many teenagers play at this level. Well, the number's not pretty for him in his debut against the Mets. Two and two thirds, five hits, three runs. He walked four. I understand him being more than a little bit nervous. I was uh, chatting with Oral Hershiser a while ago, and he said, you know, he, he, he was missing, but it wasn't like he was all over the place. Maybe giving the hitters a little too much credit early, you know, perhaps a, a function of nerves more than anything else. There actually had been talk last year, the year before, about bringing him up. Spent the last uh, two seasons at spring trainings with the Dodgers. I think we saw him pitch against the Cubs briefly uh, in the Cactus League. Usually, the, the best pitching coaches for a young pitcher are opposing hitters. They'll let you know what you can and cannot get away with. And a lot of times, what you can get away with at Double A and even Triple A is not going to play up here. It's be foul. Usually, that's the adjustment guys have to make. They're able to, quote unquote, stuff their way, you know, just overpower hitters in the minor leagues, and then they get to the big leagues, and the stuff that was that was beating minor league hitters doesn't beat big league hitters. So then you have to learn how to execute pitches. Uh, keep the ball out of the middle of the strike zone. Throw off speed pitches and fastball counts. Stuff you, you maybe didn't have to do at the low, lower levels because you can say, here it is, hit it, and, and guys just couldn't do a whole lot with it. Full count on Russell. Two on, nobody out. The scoreless tie early. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Look out, Javi Baez. That went flying over the on deck hitters head one out in the inning. That's the first strikeout for Urias. Three two comes with the slider with good depth. was the Dodgers minor league pitcher of the year two seasons ago spent most of last year at double a missed uh, almost uh, two months he had elective cosmetic surgery on his left eye in late May Baez takes a pitch off the inside corner he has not been shy about pitching inside no. here early and that's another thing you have to do at this level Threw a bullpen uh, during spring training last year, and AJ Ellis, who's catching him today, afterwards said, "I want to see a birth certificate." Can't even fathom a kid this young throwing like that. One and one on Baez. Two and one. That's a sign from Ellis. And Baez muscles one out in the left center, and it's going to drop. Rizzo around third. He will score. The throw goes toward third. Soler is in. It's one nothing. Also on the play, Baez moves to second. So that worked out really well for the Cubs. Third hit of the day for the Cubs. All have been soft. A couple of bloopers in that uh, roller off the bat of Soler, but it works. He'll take it. Peterson tries to deke Rizzo a little bit there, and in so doing, he misplays the ball. 
point he's got no shot at Soler and Baez Baez excuse me able to move into scoring position himself. RBI single and an error on Peterson. And here's Montero. Just one for ten against lefties this year. It just hasn't faced many. 232 lifetime versus Southpaws, 269 against righties. Yeah, and, and Joe very cognizant of making sure David Ross gets his rest. I see a couple of lefties over the weekend with the Diamondbacks. Montero caught Hendricks in that brilliant game last time, so it makes sense to keep them together. Foul tip, strike two. Well, you look around the field right now. You've got Mexico against Venezuela. You've got Puerto Rico out at second, Cuba at third. Mm -hmm. It is really yeah. an international game. Got Japan managing the Dodgers. <laughs> against Hazelton, PA. Ball to second, and Soler scores. So Montero gets an RBI on the ground out, two to nothing. Who knows? Might be enough the way the Cubs have pitched here lately. Hendricks with a runner at third and two runs in. That will land foul. Well, that error by uh, Peterson looming large. And if it's first and third, the Dodgers may be able to turn two there and get out of the inning. Yeah, and I have to look at the replay again. Even with the bobble, if he comes up and throws to second base, he might keep Baez at first. And after the mishandle, he came up and threw that ball into third. Called strike three, and that will end the inning. But the Cubs grab the lead. It's 2 nothing after two.
To Wrigley Cubs on top 2-0 as we move to the third. This is your Coors Light in-game report. The Cubs always working hard off the field as well as on it, trying to make their mark in the community. And earlier this week, Matt Caesar and his wife Natalie visited the Advocate Children's Hospital at Lutheran General in Park Ridge. They took some Cubs memorabilia, signed some teddy bears, some baseballs, and took pictures with them. And one of the patients that you're seeing in these pictures, his name is Jesus. He's a huge Cubs fan celebrating his birthday that day with Matt and his wife and guys the best present he could have gotten he gets to be the honorary bat kid here at Wrigley on June 22nd and I know that Matt said his enthusiasm was just contagious he is thrilled how cool it's uh, a wonderful thing um, did you ever get to be a, a bat boy I was a bat boy uh, for Picky's Tavern fast pitch softball team back in my hometown on occasion. Crawford gets hit. What was the name of it? Picky's Tavern. Picky's Tavern. Yeah, man, they could play. John, John Deneen on the mound was untouchable. Pepe LaRue at third base made every play. See, I grew up on the Canadian border in right. northern New York, and fast pitch softball was a big deal up there. Pepe to, LaRue. He yeah, was a math teacher at the junior high and then the high school. Um, he was a goaltender too you know, in high school. I mean, you know, so it, it translates to third base and you know those goaltender skills as pitch softball. So the leadoff man is uh, I'm glad I asked. That's a great story. Oh yeah, they, they, they used to have these big tournaments, like thirty some teams come in for the weekend and you you know hang around and they might recruit you to be the bad boy and then maybe throw you a couple bucks at the end of the game. Hendricks will throw over Crawford back. You run all around the, the big like four four field complex and you collect cans and you turn those back in for Nicola King. So it's a pretty good weekend. Do a little bad boy duty. Collect some cans. Yeah. Ex expanded the. Uh, Vocabulary a little bit too. <laughs> you might it imagine. Yeah. Two strikes on Ellis. The pitcher Urias is on deck. Back to back starts for AJ. With one for three last night. Watches a lot of video, trying to exploit. I mean, everybody does, but I think he probably does more than most. It's not only putting in the time, but then having the wherewithal to remember and putting a game plan together. Crawford takes off, and Ellis fouls to the screen. The team that has scored. Basically has won in this series. Dodgers did uh, get the first run ye yesterday or last night. Bryant the two run homer. So I guess first to two has been the theme. And in the last six games, Cubs starters have allowed either one or no earned runs in each of those ball games. Be amazing. And, and, and it hasn't been the uh, you know the April cold wind blowing in environment here on this homestand. Wind hasn't been howling out every day, but it's been you know, at least neutral, if not hitter friendly. Yeah, this has always been a good run scoring ballpark, uh, and I would say when the wind blows in, it helps to keep the ball in the yard. When the wind either blows out or doesn't blow in. <laughs> yeah. And then in his last it, start, the wind was blowing out in Kyle's last start. Right. Uh, keep it on the ground, you take the wind out of play. Right. 368 to the gaps, very reachable. And a neutral day as Solaire makes a catch. Ellis is out. 
Well, grab your cowboy hats and boots for John and Farrell Lester's Never Quit Goes Country fundraiser. It'll take place at Joe's Bar on Wheat Street, July 6th at 6 p.m. Join John and Farrah, Cub players, coaches for a night of country music, interactive carnival games. Oh my goodness, I hope they have whack a mole, food, and much more country fun. Tickets are on sale now at cubs.com slash never quit NVRQT. Rios did lay down a sack bunt in his debut, and he's going to do it again here. Second, two gone for Utley. With the single to center to start the game. Kyle in this ballpark this year, prior to today, had a 193 ERA. This is his sixth home start. He has not allowed a home run here. Just hold two home runs so far this season. We'll go back to uh, August 30th, the Arietta no hitter. The last four games between these two teams, the losing team has scored a grand total of one run. So you said two might be enough if it holds up like it. It has here recently between these two teams. It will. Two and oh. Ooh, look out. Always been quick inside. Turn on that heater. 13th year in the big leagues for Chase Utley. Two for ten in the series. Southern California went to high school in Long Beach and then UCLA. Three and two. Supremely confident in that change up. Utley thought he was going to get a heater on three one. Carroll with this big pitch coming, man in scoring position wants to talk it over with Hendricks exactly how they want to attack Utley here. Got a base open. It's not, you know, Hendricks' game is never just a Pump a fastball over the heart of the plate. Anyway, rarely will he do that. Sometimes he'll ambush a guy with that approach. We'll get a good look at it there. Nothing in the zone. One was up, and he's going to get away with it. There's a curveball, and Utley lines to Hayward to end the inning. Midway in the third, Cubs two, Dodgers nothing.
Sports joins CSN's Kelly Kroll for a recording of Beer Money next Thursday at Jameson's Pub in Frankfurt. Test your sports trivia skills for the chance to take home cash. Beer Money presented by Coors Light. Hope you can uh, stop by and say hi to us in the bleachers tomorrow. Big promo had us in suits and ties. Yeah, I don't think we'll be knotted up out there. One and one on Fowler. Let's wear coats and ties and uh, Bermuda shorts. Ooh, that would be a good look. Maria's working quickly. Two balls and a strike. So no Kershaw in this series and no Kenta Maeda. Fowler is out. What that was? What was that? That was a nubber. Classic was. nubber. And you want to take a bat and hit it again. That's against the rules, though. So you have to drop the bat and run. Ball at 94. Pick up a little steam here, isn't he? Hard on the ground the other way for a base hit. Howard has hit the ball to that side of the field twice. And he's one for two. Yeah, he's having some, some success going the other way here lately. And, and he's been seeing a lot of fastballs up in the zone. Pitch that traditionally he's been able to lay off. This year he's expanded a little bit uh, and chased some, but you know, when he can get on top, maybe hard the other way, good things can happen for him. Runner at first, one out. And Chris Bryant oh. takes a strike on the outside edge. Giants a winner already today, 6 0 in Atlanta. Madison Bumgarner went seven and two thirds, allowed no runs. He struck out 11. And he also homered. Two run homer in the fifth. So the Dodgers are five games out in the West. Bryant in the air to deep center. Peterson on the warning track hauls it in. Hayward back to first. Down towards the end of the bat a little bit perhaps. Didn't miss by much. Let's go back to last night. Braves did win in 11. Freddie Freeman. With the walk off Homer. Jan Gomes beat the Rangers. George Springer game ender for the Astros who today are looking for their sixth consecutive win. They are scoreless with the Diamondbacks in the bottom of the fourth. Diamondbacks will head here for the weekend and the Dodgers will go home to play the Braves. The White Sox won their game in 11 yesterday as well. Joe Kelly gets sent to the minors after the Red Sox 13 to 9 loss in Baltimore. You know he had won his last 10 consecutive decisions and hadn't lost in 15 starts going into last night but he had a huge ERA almost eight and a half so he was optioned to triple A Pawtucket. Or was it Pawtucket? Is that how they uh, say it? Pawtucket, probably locals probably say Pawtucket. Home of the Paw Sox. They've been an affiliate with the Red Sox for a long time. Old McCoy Stadium. Rizzo golfs the other way. And 
this will end the inning as Crawford makes the catch after three and a beautiful day here at Wrigley. Always a good day for a hot dog at the old ballpark. Two nothing Cubs. Today's CSN Bar of the Game presented by Coors Light is Randall Roadhouse in Carpentersville. To see the complete list of the CSN Bars of the Game presented by Coors Light, visit CSNChicago.com. Julio Urias with a career high three innings. <laughs> two and two thirds in his debut on Friday in New York. So Hendricks back to work. And a change up. To Seeger just missed. By the way, uh, Ben Zobris did not win Player of the Month for May. Daniel Murphy did. Well, there's a number of deserving candidates. Uh, Marcelo Zuna, another one that put a huge numbers. Ben getting the day off. At least he didn't start. Jam shot roller. Baez to Rizzo. Yeah, well, you know, I, I think we talk a lot about the Baez Russell on the left side of the infield when John Lester's pitching. I think I think Joe really likes Baez Russell up the middle with Hendricks on the mound. Right-handed sinker baller. Tends to get a lot of ground balls in the middle of the diamond. This was a strikeout pitch to Turner. It was called out on the swing by Nick Lentz, but on the side replay, it did not look like he went around. It was an interesting shot. We had Montero pointing down at the first base umpire. We had Lentz pointing at Turner. Said that's a swing. It's out of play. Here's the best look you'll get. And that's not a swing, I don't think. That's what the call was. So first, you make the case I didn't swing, and then you say, well. Why you take it yourself? Why didn't you ask for help? And by that time, it was, it's done. It's over with. I want to stay up till yeah. one. No. Thank Thank you. You. How about twelve thirty? Can't ask Midnight. for a sidebar. Please. If you ask me again, we're going to make it eleven thirty. 
two and two. Yeah, there you go. You're that'd long be, past those that'd, days. That'd be the next, it's still raw for me. Um, umpire leverage. If you don't keep it up, your next at bat is going to be 0 and 1 when you start. <laughs> really fun parts of our day is, is talking with Joe Madden in his office. And we often get into old minor league stories. You had one that I don't think is worth repeating on the air today about a minor league umpire who was not feeling so well. But uh, didn't Joe tell a story once about some kid showed up an umpire in minor leagues and he was managing. And that umpire just decided that it was like a four or five game series and he just held a grudge until Joe oh, basically right? went up and said we're good now. The kid apologized we're fine and the umpire said OK. And then that was it and it was good. I mean this is you know back in the 80s. Yeah. Yeah that's I, I could definitely see that happening. Especially if it's an umpire that's been in the minor leagues a long time. There's a lot of bitterness especially at the higher level like triple A. There's, there's a lot, plenty of bitterness going along around at that level. Rizzo snags it. And they'll go three six three. Second double play turn here in the first four innings and that's it. For the Dodgers. Two nothing Cubs. Is watching a New Windsor cable in New Windsor, Illinois. Tomorrow, 121st pitch. Diamondbacks are here for the start of a weekend set up to the first 20,000 early arriving fans receive a Cubs tote bag presented by the MLB Network. Cubs.com for information and tickets. Suitable for uh, grocery shopping. You and don't for need. a bleacher broadcast. Yeah, we can put our sunscreen in there. Big Panama hat. Solaire leads off. A couple of freeze pops. pops. Single and a run in the second. And he's two for two. And we're bleeding this kid to death. <laughs> Fifth hit of the game. One has been sharply hit. Byproduct of approach when you work up in the zone and in. A lot of times a weak contact is a little flare like that as opposed to a ball down. That might be a little, little ground ball. Russell the hitter. Short lead by Solaire and a big swing and a miss. Remember the late Ray Kroc, 1974, when he was so frustrated. For his team, the Padres, he grabbed a, a PA microphone. And said he had never seen such stupid ball playing in my life. Well, <laughs> another ball softly hit. This one's caught by Gonzalez. Padres current executive chairman Ron Fowler may be added to the Wikipedia page. 
in that regard. Uh, no, I did not. He went on uh, the mighty 1090. I think that's their flagship, uh -huh. right? It is. Yeah. And just absolutely crushed his team. Really? Quote, it's been embarrassing. I don't know how else to put it. A road trip, one and seven. Pathetic. To have a starter like Shields, James Shields got knocked around the other day, perform as poorly as he did yesterday is an embarrassment to the team, an embarrassment Ooh. to Ooh. him. Wow. Now, who's this gentleman? What's his title? Ron Fowler. He's, He's the, the executive chairman of the Padres, part of the ownership group. Well, I'm guessing he doesn't spend a whole lot of time in the clubhouse. No. He said, we thought we'd at least be a 500 team. I'd like to break through 400. As Baez sends one deep to left, and it's gone to the back of the bleachers. A two-run homer. And it's 4 nothing. Oh, nothing soft about that contact. Change up. Not a lot of fade on it. Stayed in the zone. Uh, look at him use the lower leg for the lower body. Long through the zone. And gone. Number three for Javi Baez. Ford home run replay. Baez not an everyday starter. Been slumping a little bit at the plate. The 0 1 on Montero is a strike. That goes back to the point I was making earlier about young pitchers and settling in at the major league level. Stuff you can get away with at the minor leagues. I, mean, I don't mean that universally. You can still get knocked around down there. And you can still get away with stuff here, just not as often. And, and there are not going to be many guys in a minor league lineup in the seven hole with Baez power. Called strike three. It's the first out. We look sharp. Two outs. Yeah, sorry. No, I did. What? Well, Mark skipped. Uh, I skipped Russell's at bat in my book. You had me panicking when you said that's the first out. I started looking at my book because I'm knocking the wrong thing here. Don't get used to it. No. Well, not to oversell this kid, but, but you know, he's giving up four here. But the one thing you have to like about him is, is his demeanor and his tempo hasn't changed. Right. Even with the base runners, and you could see with you know some of the soft hits. You, you, you might see some bad body language. It kind of woe is me, man. Am I getting unlucky? Kind of. He just continues to do his thing. Pre pitch routine and the timing has stayed the same. Which lines to right. It's going to hold up, however, for Thompson. That is the how many outs? Well, just watch. They're running off. So okay, that's the third out of the inning. Javier Baez didn't make it out. He had a two-run homer. A little Sammy Hawk to boot. Four nothing.
offers special programs designed for your future Cub. From kids Sundays at Wrigley Field to Clark's crew and baseball summer camps throughout the Chicago area. There are many ways to build lifelong Cubs memories with your kids. Visit Cubs.com slash kids to learn all about our Cubs kids offerings. Four nothing for the home team. Peterson Thompson and Crawford. Against Kyle Hendricks. Change up. Tap foul. Edward Nosek never misses a game, watches us uh, on the app in Northern California. Peterson, with nobody around at yeah, third base, two tried strike. to bunt. Yeah, two strikes. Uh, with two strikes, and he's out. Yeah. Well, I think that speaks to uh, the way the Dodgers are seeing the ball off Kyle Hendricks here today. Mm -hmm. A bit of a desperate play by Peterson. You know, I like a two strike bunt try, mm -hmm. especially for guys who'd like to bunt and are capable of it, because that's the one time you know, defenders will back off. Now, this is a different situation because he's, you know, he's just trying to take advantage of the shift. A strike on Thompson. Here, here's the thing, and I, I'd have to see it again. Um, because nobody was around, he could have squared really early, and I don't, I don't know how early he actually squared to bunt, and he did not have to be perfect, right? Just get it into a general area. Yeah, he showed early. It's, a, it's an easy play to dismiss to say, well, that was a boneheaded play with two strikes trying to bunt there for a power guy. You look at what most major league hitters do after they're down in the count, no balls and two strikes. It makes a little more sense. High drive out in the deep left center and gone. A home run for Thompson. And the Dodgers are on the board. It's four to one. Kid has been impressive here uh, in this series. A, a good athlete. We see him make a couple real good plays in the outfield. You have to like his approach at the plate. It's his eighth home run. A sinker that worked back to the middle of the plate. There's your forward home run replay. The first one allowed in this ballpark this year by Kyle Hendricks, and the first one in the last nine or ten starts for him here. Baez two hits a home run and now a sparkling play what a catch oh that is beautiful explosive I'm talking about a quick first step and a wild inning Peterson struck out on a bunt attempt Thompson with a home run. Crawford lines out on a highlight reel diving catch by Javi Baez. 1 0 to Ellis. On the outside corner. And long ball, just the third one allowed by Kyle. He came into this game with a .33, a third of a home run per nine inning rate, best in the National League. Won't give up another one until what? June 
to me to read that uh, disclaimer. Past performances are indicative of future results. Baez's performance today just underscores the depth on this roster and how strong the Cubs bench is. We've seen Matt Caesar very limited time put up big offensive numbers. Ellis strikes out. Baez filling in today for Zobrist has done it all. Kyle Hendricks has a three run lead in the fifth. And Chicago.com presented by State Farm. Let's take a look at the Cubs' upcoming schedule brought to you by Travel Wisconsin. Weekend uh, set with the Diamondbacks. And then uh, off on a three city road trip that starts in Philadelphia. Plan your fun today at TravelWisconsin.com. Try the cheese, I heard it's really good. Cheese Castle? I have not. We stopped there on the way to Milwaukee one day. Marius into the fifth, trailing four to one. Switch hitting Dexter Fowler, batting righty, takes a strike. How can you not go to a place called the Cheese Castle? Yeah, they've renovated and everything. That'd be like bypassing the Gravy Mansion. Isn't there a corn palace or something in South Dakota? Uh, just a, a, a good place to go get corn, like yeah. prepared corn? Yeah. I seem to have gone there about 20 years ago on a trip out to a South Dakota. A Griswold side trip uh -huh. to the House of Corn. Pounced foul. And it's three and two. Backhanded by Seeger, and he makes the play. It's interesting. I was watching Seeger set up before the pitch, and he was actually uh, just prior to the pitch back on the outfield grass. And I was thinking to myself, well, with Fowler's speed, that's a little bit of a high risk play on a slow roller. He had a long way to go, but well, it's kind of medium pace. He was able to close on it quickly and make a play. I think it would take him a little longer to get started. He's a, he's a long legged guy, Corey Seeger. Fastball strike on Hayward. Mitchell, South Dakota. 
Corn Palace. It's been around since 1921. Venture into those parts very often, but if I, if I ever do, multi-purpose arena, so sporting events and concerts. Oh wow! Yeah, gotta go now. The world's only. Field gone. A line shot rocket. Five to one. Just like that, the Cubs reclaim their four-run lead. Home run number two for Hayward. He's been working awfully hard after getting off to a very slow start, seeing some positive signs. Solid line drive to left last time. This time again, it's up in the zone. And he gets the head out in front of it and whacks it into the bleachers. First homer in this ballpark as a Chicago Cub. A Ford home run replay as Chris Bryant. Towering blast. How far will it go? Off the board. Wow. Anything you can do, I can do better. Corn Palace power. He almost hit it to Mitchell. <laughs> he knocked the cob out of that. Boy, he's been on a nice roll, has he not? Got one last night. Look at that swing. Look at the hips. Ford home run replay. Back to back. Hayward still had his helmet on. Rick Honeycutt, the pitching coach, out to talk with his rookie pitcher. That's three home runs allowed in the last six batters he has faced. The theme early was soft contact, maybe some bad luck. Urias, but uh, not so much lately. Getting thumped here. Uh. So grounds to Utley. Hatcher for the Dodger bullpen. Former Major League Hatcher turned pitcher. Tomorrow we'll see another young top pitching prospect, Archie Bradley, will pitch for the Diamondbacks. John Lackey for the Cubs tomorrow afternoon. Hundred thirty six feet on the Bryant home run. In the stat cast. Swing and a miss on a changeup. So Lair strikes out. Six one Cubs. USAA honors our fallen soldiers for those who gave everything. We may breathe free. We honor you.
Day of home runs today as the Cubs have a 6 1 lead. Pinch hitter Kike Hernandez has to back out of the way. The breaking ball that didn't break. He went off last night's game with a home run. Off John Lester. He's batting for Urias. Curveball worked. Just thinking about it during the break, uh, we're often accused of corny puns, but today literally it has been the case. Mm -hmm. Swing and a miss, one and two. Hernandez, uh, high energy player. A little flair in his game. Toward third, and Bryant will just eat it. Off infield single. Here's Utley. Happy 92nd birthday, Charlie Miller, watching in Humboldt, Iowa. Foul the other way. Dodgers have bounced into two double plays today. You're normally not thinking about running, but because of the potential for the double play. Let's start Hernandez. He's not measured a very big lead. The ball not hit hard. Bias from the glove to Rizzo's glove. Bobby's putting together a nice highlight reel today. Yeah, I'm always nervous on that play, so there are times when it, it's, a, it's a must. I'm not sure this was a must flip it with the glove play, but it's fun to watch. Fear is that ball gets hung up in the webbing and you flip it over the first baseman's head. Well, I guess sometimes the answer to the question, why did you do that, is because I can. Yeah, he's got, you know, he's, he's got a certain amount of flair in his game, too. It's always the question the player will be asked. Did you have to make the play that way? Well, I felt like I did skip. He was really flying down the line. Okay, just make sure. Other notable June 2nd birthdays Raul Ibanez. Happy 44th. And the Cub, Nafi Perez, turning 43. Fouled away. Gene Michael. 78. The stick. We gotta have a good Gene Michael story. I don't really. Okay. Other than the fact that I had to remind them to put me on the lineup card at Yankee Stadium when I first got called up. The late pitcher Sloppy Thurston was born. On June 2nd, 1899. Sounds like a, a sandwich or a cocktail. Right? Give me a sloppy Thurston. Gets away and allows Hernandez to advance. Mrs. Howell said when, <laughs> when, when Hubby had a little too much to drink. According to baseball reference, Thurston. Whose real name was Hollis, earned his nickname due to the fact that he was always, in fact, well groomed. So it was kind of the, the 
ir the irony yeah, of it. Like, like calling a skinny guy fat. Right. Or a fat guy tiny. Curly of the Three Stooges. Mm -hmm. yeah. Another happy 41st former Cub pitcher Steve Ring. Seeger sends one deep to left. That will get the run in. As Hernandez will tag and score six to two. So base is empty and now it's Turner who has struck out and walked. Hendricks in good shape in terms of the pitch count at 73. So for the first time on the homestand, a Cubs starting pitcher has allowed more than one earned run. So and the inning is over. Dodgers get one. Cubs with a fairly comfortable 6-2 lead in the sixth. Join the Cubs season ticket holder waiting list today to claim your spot in our lineup for season tickets. It's easy and free to register. For details, visit Cubs.com slash waiting list. Right-hander Chris Hatcher who made his major league debut as a catcher against the Cubs back in 2010. Then with the Marlins, converted to Full time pitcher the following year and made his major league pitching debut in this ballpark. First player to catch in the majors one year and then come back the following year as a pitcher since Art Dahl in 1936 for the Boston Braves. So it had been done before. But Ross, doesn't he have a perfect record as a pitcher? I believe he does, yeah. The only thing he wants to go back out there. He wants to, he wants to sit on that lifetime ERA of zero. 
side on Russell. A lot of walks for Hatcher so far this year. Contributing to that inflated ERA. Just outside. Full count three and two. Kenley Jansen was a catcher, right? Yeah. Position player. Carlos Marmol. Pedro Baez all so they got three guys in their bullpen of former position players. He walked him. <laughs> Day for Baez at the plate. Two hits, a homer, three RBIs, and defense are Xfinity high speed action. Fun to watch him play, man. He can make all kinds of plays. With the glove and his arm. <laughs> Top of it, Hatcher, a switch hitter. To the University of North Carolina at Wilmington, from Kinston, North Carolina, 31 years old. The uh, college postseason is kicking off. The, the road to Omaha. So the pairings in the uh, paper this morning. Who's the favorite? I do not know. You know who would know? Oral. Right? Um, he probably yeah. Yeah, he's. Does he still do the college world series? I don't series? think he does, but I know he follows it closely. Baez strikes out. Ask him during the break. Here's Montero. I didn't I didn't do an exhaustive search but I didn't see any of the local schools in the field. Center actually drifting toward right center. It's Peterson, and he's got it. That's the second out. Uh, let's see the top eight seeds: Florida, Louisville, Miami, of Florida, Texas A&M, Texas Tech, Mississippi State, Clemson, and LSU. ACC. Tied the all time record of having 10 teams in the tournament. <laughs> Miami is in for the 44th straight season. Florida State, 39 years in a row. Double elimination format. So the regionals the start regionals tomorrow. And the super regionals. One ball and two strikes on Kyle Hendricks.
Russell still at first. He walked to start the inning. Played his college ball at Dartmouth. Back and finished up his degree while a minor leaguer, a degree in economics. You can miss in the Ivy League. It wasn't three strikes for an out, it was pi. The strike out 3.14. <laughs> Cubs lead 6 2 as we go to the seventh. Joe Montaigne coming up. First stretch was the 20 strikeout game, right? 1998. I'll never forget it. What a day that was. I still have that ball. I carry signed it, dated it. it. Sits in my office. I look at it. I say, well, it's not exactly Cooperstown, but this is going to do. Yeah, pretty uh, special. We we talk about that every year around uh, May the 6th as Kyle Hendricks will continue on. How are you Joe what's going on with you these days I'm excellent life really couldn't be better I'm here on this gorgeous Chicago day watching the Cubs winning uh, can't be better I am starting season 12 of criminal minds when I get back to California Fantastic. Uh, it's all good it's all great I'm sure all my, my wife owns this restaurant taste Chicago in Burbank California I'm sure everybody's in the restaurant right now watching waiting for me to <laughs> sing this song <laughs> so there's going to be a lot of noise coming from the West Coast in, right. the, in a little while. This is low. yeah we just got a uh, tweet saying that very thing really oh, good. Uh, they're right. at the restaurant watching so right. Right. Hi Burbank one one to Gonzalez is outside for a ball 12 seasons of criminal minds I mean when you start a series you're hoping to be renewed yeah exactly well you know it's like anything you know it's like it's like when you start a rock band you hope you become the Beatles but you know many fall along the wayside. Is playing deep. He will make the play. How fun has this been for you uh, as a fan? Last year, obviously, the Cubs win 97. There weren't tons of expectations. This is a little different. Everybody expected the team to be good, and they are. It's fantastic. I mean, it's gone obviously according to some great plan that's been in the works here for a while. Epstein's done an incredible job. Madden's done a great job. Everybody. I mean, you go down the line. It's it's. The pieces have been coming together for obviously for a while now and, and this is the uh, the result. But the fans the fans deserve it and this, this is the kind of club baseball we've you know been praying for for a long time. One strike and Jock Peterson. JD I'm going to I'm going to throw this out there. All uh, right. I think Joe Montaigne if we had a, a seventh inning stretch Hall of Fame he might be. 
in our first <laughs> class. <laughs> in the inaugural class. Yes. Well. You've done it pretty much every year since. I've, I've done quite a few. Yeah. I really have. And I, uh, and I, I love it every time I do it. It never gets old. It's, I, if I think about it, if I, if I could pick a place to be at any given time in my life, what better than sitting yeah. here right with you guys right now looking out at this field and this ball, kind of a ball game. There's a reason you are asked back every year because we love having you in the booth. Well, I love being here. Are you, uh, do you know your career record? The you Cubs know, are it's, it's, it's been better lately. I tell yeah. you, we won last year. We won the game last year, and I think I won the year before. There have been a couple no, losses no. mixed in there, but that's okay. Nothing like when I was a kid and I came to 10 straight games when I was 8 years old and they <laughs> lost them all. So, uh, so when you start to think, is it me? I I am I right? As a kid, you... I absolutely thought it was me. Sure. I told my dad when he asked me the 11th time that year, I said, you know, I better not go. <laughs> <laughs> but he convinced me it wasn't my fault. So. Right. I think they won that 11th game. Yeah, that's funny how our minds work. I remember as a kid watching, uh, I was a Knicks fan, and, and I watched, it seemed like every time I'd watch them on TV, they'd lose. So I, I would deny watching them on TV because I was, was going to bring them bad luck. Two outs in the inning is Trace Thompson. Comes leading 6 to 2. Nearing the one third marker. Of the season, uh, 51 games. You get to 54. That's the one-third mark, and it's it's pretty heady stuff, Joe. When you think about the pace the Cubs are on, and we've got a long way to go. But this is looking like a pretty special season. Yeah, they're playing fast and loose. Then, uh, it's great. It's a strike. Good chance to talk to Joe today. I did. Good. I made a special point to get down there. In fact, I told him. I says, between me, you, and Rizzo, we got three Italians out on the field. We should be able to. At least eat well tonight. If nice. nothing else, yeah, Joe was great, great, great manager. I was thrilled to meet him. Two, two to Thompson. And I got to, and I got to see Tommy Lasorda, who's a dear friend of mine, over this, over sitting over behind the Dodgers dugout back there. And uh, he's, a, he's a he's a dear dear friend. And I, as I told him, I says, well, if the Cubs. Can't win today. At least it'll be the Dodgers, Tommy, and uh, you know I love you so. But I, I'm thinking it's going to work out. So far, so good. It's working out for the best. Dodgers, will, you know, they've won plenty. Full count. Thompson. The bleachers in the fifth, and he strikes out. Here Here we go. Perfect. Joe Montagna, the stretch brought to you by Mazda. Take me out to the ball game. Actor and Chicago native Joe Montagna. One, two, three. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jacks. I don't care if I ever get back and will root, root, root for the Cubbies. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. Go, come on, go! From the box seats to the bleachers!
as the Cubs lead this game six to two. Archer continues on. Top of the order. Starting with Fowler. Loop single, a little number in front of home plate, and a ground ball to short for Fowler today. I believe he called it a classic number. Number. Yeah. I guess a little number would be redundant. Foul. Fowler launches, but he was out front and way foul. Bouncing out in the street. Dexter with his fourth plate appearance, all to lead off an inning. Call strike three. Tomorrow, the Diamondbacks are in town. Game one of a weekend set, and we will broadcast the entire game live from the bleachers. Coverage starts tomorrow on CSN at 1230 with Cubs pregame live presented by Fields Auto. Well, this is supposed to be spectacular again tomorrow. Yeah. Have not gone well for the Diamondbacks. They had huge hopes going into the season. They entered play today nine under 500. They are leading at Houston three nothing in the bottom of the seventh. Dealing with injuries. Start for Shelby Miller. He's now on the DL. I think the AJ Pollock injury was was kind of an omen, right? Right before opening day. Yeah, well, the Pollock, uh, such a good player, very underrated player. A big piece of it out there. And yeah. it was on a slide too, correct? Broke yeah, it was, yeah. It was actually, was getting up from the slide right. and put a little weight on it. So there, there is something going on in there. ERA approaching five. You know, they acquired Miller. They signed Granke. They were a very good offensive team last year. They're scoring runs are fifth in the league and runs scored. Hayward with a bullet under the bleachers in right center in the fifth. Next pitch, Chris Bryant with a monster shot to left. Put the board just above where we're going to be tomorrow. Better bring your glove. Swing and a miss. Round number two. Four strikeouts for Hatcher. He's faced six batters. A little hop on that heater. Lively. A letter high at 95. Tough pitch to handle.
where it would land. And there's such a you know, smooth swing, though. We talk about pitchers with you know, easy velocity. It looked like they're playing catch and they throw 95. That's, that's what it is with Chris. It's a nice smooth pass at it, and the next thing you know, it's 450 feet away. Strikes out the side, but his team trails by four as we go to the eighth. With dogged determination. Failing that, we suggest public transportation. The Cubs offer a free bike check. It's located by the Addison Red Line station. If you drive, the Cubs provide free remote parking and shuttle service on night and weekend games. For information, visit the A to Z guide at Cubs.com. Caesar now playing left for Soler. Hendricks starting the eighth. Crawford Ellis pinch hitter. Fair ball and Rizzo's got it. More weak contact. And yet another ground ball out for Hendricks. Kind of becoming the norm for him. 293 ERA into this ball game. The league was batting 209 against him. Joe Sheehan had a great piece on the Cubs and their hot start and really honed in on their uh, pitching. How about this note through 51 games, so going into today. Cubs pitching staff had allowed the fewest runs of any team since 1973. So as impressive as his offense has been, I think we thought this team would hit. We like the pitching staff, but I mean it has been like jaw-droppingly good. Yeah, well, you know, the addition of, of John Lackey obviously lengthens the rotation. Uh, the quality of work you're getting from the 
you know, the quote unquote back of the rotation. You know, these guys have pitched yeah. anything like fourth and fifth starters. The Hamill and Hendricks. They've been among the best in the league. Ellis strikes out. Tell you what, Kyle is. Uh, He's trying to make it difficult, isn't he, on his manager to take him out? Here's Pui. Well, especially on a day where you, you know you, you want to stay away from Rondon. Uh, he was not available yesterday. He apparently, is available today, but uh, I think I think Joe would rather not use him. Four pitches in his complete game last time out. Just missed. Could have gotten that one. Oh, one and one. Quality pitch. And a little cut change up running away from Puig. Struck him out to end the inning. Kyle Hendricks dealing again today through eight, leading six to two. Cap, thank you. J.P. Howell, left-hander, and a strike called on Anthony Rizzo. 6-2 in the eighth. Howell, a veteran. Big, slow curveball, his best pitch. Not a hard thrower. To center, Peterson back, gone. A basket shot for Rizzo. Number 12.
First one in a while for Anthony. Fourth on the day for the Cubs. As they continue this power assault on Dodger pitching. Roberts quickly out to the mound. He had the lefty lefty matchup. Didn't work out for him. There's the form a Ford home run replay. Down and through goes Rizzo. Big part of the yard. First homer since May 14th off a left hander Jeff Locke of the Pirates. So Weber's sauces and seasonings called to the pen grilling a flavor up to the bigs will be back. Hefty, hefty, hefty. Baez. Hayward and Bryant. Those two are back to back and now Rizzo. Hefty, hefty, hefty home runs. Seven to two. Sidewinding Lewis Coleman is in. Weber sauces and seasonings call to the pen. Grilling flavor up to the bigs. I'm doing a nice job for the Dodgers. They neutralize right handed hitters with that drop down delivery. And you see the numbers to support it. Right handed batters hitting just 093 against them. Lefties 300. One and two to Matt Caesar, his first plate appearance. Just came in to play defense. Tantalizing, but off the corner. We talk about the Lugie sometimes. L O O G Y, left handed, one out only guy. Let's talk about a Rugi. Tough play as Turner able to barehand it. But he tripped. And a hit for Caesar. Yeah, ball had a little side spin. It was kicking away from Turner. It's gonna be a really difficult play anyway. He gave it everything he had. You see, he has to reach out for it, and in so doing, loses his balance. Ten for the Cubs. Just about everybody's got one. Addison Russell, and Miguel Montero have been held off the hit board so far.
Phillips could have an all starting infield in San Diego representing the National League. Could have Dexter Fowler in center. Jason Hayward is fourth on the outfield list. It's a strikeout. Russell's gone. They have two, maybe three pitchers. Well, the 2016 Insurance MLB All Star oh. Game ballot is here. Thank you. At the Cubs.com to choose your All Star Game worthy stars and send them to the MLB All Star Game presented by MasterCard on July 12th in San Diego. Vote today, vote tomorrow. Vote at Cubs.com. Sandeezy. Two and zero. Travis Wood, after Russell struck out, started to get loose. Baez gets under one, and it's caught by Seeger. Montero. Ball hit that high in a day game can really be problematic as a fielder has to stare up into that bright sky for a while. Not as breezy here today as it is on many days. That helps Seeger's cause. One ball, no strikes to Montero. Caesar not being held at first. Pitch missed again. Draws the walk. He will not be back to back complete games for Kyle Hendricks. Tommy Lostella going to pinch hit here. Hendricks today, eight innings, three hits, two runs, a walk, six strikeouts. Third run average down to 284. From 293. Today's start. A brilliant performance by Hendricks, three hits. Uh, Leadoff single by Utley. He was quickly erased on a double play ball. The Thompson home run in the fifth and an infield hit by Hernandez pinch hitting in the sixth. Never really under any duress all afternoon long. Tommy Lestella. Right. 
too high. Three and one. And then a lot of playing time for Lestella lately, and with the Diamondbacks running out a couple left-handers in the upcoming series, and that's will be tough to come by for him in that set as well. Archie Bradley pitches tomorrow. He's a right-hander. Lestella might get a start in that one. Handful of plate appearances for Lestella over the last week to ten days. Runners take off on a 3 2 and it's fouled away. Big crowd this afternoon 37,422. Look, the other day the Cubs were fifth in baseball in attendance, up a little over 6,000 per game from last year. Miss to end the eighth. Travis Wood in the ninth. We're trying to get the final three outs, leading seven to two. Comprehensive nightly sports wrap up show in town on Sportsnet Central. Get a recap of today's game, plus highlights from around the league. Don't miss Sportsnet Central tonight at 6 30 on CSN Chicago. Here comes Travis Wood for the 25th time. He's 3 0 with a 2.79 ERA. Just brilliant. In relief of uh, Jason Hamill on Monday, Hamill had to leave with a, a hamstring uh, cramp. Travis worked four perfect innings, struck out four, through 43 pitches, 35 for strikes. First pitch strike, and Chase Utley. If Hendricks hadn't gone nine the last time out, he might have been given the opportunity today. But rested bullpen. There's no sense in pushing it just because. Joe talked after the game last night about wanting his starters to finish some games, giving them confidence to know they can do it down the road. But Kyle just did it. So. You know, it's kind of a cool thing for us to watch and for fans and, and the like, but. Joe's thinking big picture. And and as good as he was pitching, I think if it's a five to two game, he probably goes back out for the ninth. And, and if the spot in the batting order didn't come up, he right. might be back out for the ninth. Could affect it. A 
had he finished the game, it would have been the first time since Greg Maddox in 2004 that the Cubs had done. Back to back complete games from the same pitcher. Yeah, see, if you or I were managing, we'd, we'd be looking at that stuff going, no, I want you to finish, Kyle, because it'd be really cool. Nice play, Russell. He makes those tricky hops. Normally seem pretty easy, even though they're not. One out. Yeah, good footwork. He's almost always in a good position to handle the tough hop. But Skip, I'm tired. I know, but the last cut to do it was Greg Maddox. Yeah. Don't you want to do yeah. that? I thought, I thought you said you, didn't, you don't want to stand in the way of greatness. Strike and Corey Seeger. Short stops in this series. Uh, should be doing this for a very long time at this level. One and two. Again, everything away here in this sequence. He's going to be willing to take a bigger bite of home plate here. The American League Pitcher of the Month, Rich Hill. Yeah, he's been dealing. Congrats to the former Cub. Still three and two. I guess we could say the count's still the same. Last Seeger reference of the series, I promise. No way to work a Betty Lou in there. And he walks. Kind of a strut down to first base there. That's what that was. There's Turner. Rich Hill has a 225 earned run average. He's 1 8, lost 3. As a fifth fielding independent pitching of uh, 2.67. This is Rich Hill. Best. This is Rich Hill. Okay. Just behind Steven Strasburg, just ahead of Jake Arrieta. Wow. And Kyle Hendricks slots in right behind Jake.
And Joe brought Travis Wood into that game behind uh, Jason Hamill the other day. It made perfect sense. The Dodgers had a, a very heavy leaning left handed lineup and, and Wood was able to neutralize them. And I'm sure Joe was just thinking, you know, give me two good innings and we'll just keep passing the baton. But he was so efficient, he was able to stay out there for four. And a little tougher here. 18 pitches in. Two strikes on the third batter he's faced. Seeger able to get a big lead with Rizzo not holding him. Line shot. That's out there. Double play. Game over. Cubs win. Cubs win seven to the final. Corey Seager was a rambling, gambling man, and he got caught. And the Cubs take three out of four. Indeed, he did. Uh, third double play of the day for the Cubs. Uh, this one a little unconventional. A rocket to second base, but it works. Two outs ends the ball game. Saves Travis Wood some pitches and. Uh, could become important in tomorrow's ball game. Yep, the uh, Diamondbacks will come in to uh, wrap up this homestand. Cubs are six and one so far on the homestand, and overall they have won eight of their last nine. We started the day talking about the great starting pitching for the Cubs on this homestand. It continued. With the work of Kyle Hendricks here today, but it was not a one man show today. The power bats showed up in a big way as they thumped four home runs. Toast to the game is presented by Benny's Beverage Depot with honorable mention to Kyle Hendricks. We're going with Javier Baez. They yeah, drove in three. He singled in a run in the second, then a two run home run in the fourth. That kind of got the, the home run deal rolling. His third, and a couple of spectacular plays in the field. Check this one out. This is just beautiful. Benny's Beverage Depot is the official champagne provider of the Chicago Cubs. Kelly Crow. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Well, Javi, four home runs from four different guys today. You let off that party. I know you were seeing Urias pretty well that first time around, but how about that second time? Uh, well, you know, we just, I I'm trying to hit the ball, make contact. Um, on, on good pitchers and, and he, he threw me a change over the play and I react to it um, and it went for it. That next inning you're standing down here with Hayward and Soler and you watch Chris Bryant go off the scoreboard. What you guys couldn't have been cheering any louder. What was that like? Well you know Jay, Jay was shaking the last hand in the dugout and, and as soon as he checked my hand the, the, the next home I went, went up. You've been moving all over the infield defensively. Yesterday you were at third, today at second. How do you prepare to make grabs like you did, diving stops, and just always be ready? Uh, it's hard. I'm just, I'm just react to it, react to the play, and, and depends, depends on, on when I'm playing. At, um, you know, I just, I just react to it. Let's be honest. Did you watch it on the video board afterwards? Which one? That diving stop that you made. Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure. I didn't know I, I didn't know I was gonna make it that far, but I did. You should have watched it. We all did. Oh, Appreciate yeah. it, Javi. Thank Great you. day today. Thank you. Two for three, a big day for Javier Baez defensively as well, guys, and six of seven here at home on this homestead. Kelly, thank you. Make sure you join us tomorrow from the bleachers at 12:30 on CSN game one. Diamondbacks and the Cubs from Wrigley Field. Now for JD, for Kelly, our entire crew, Len Casper with your final score. Cubs 7, Dodgers 2. Coming up next. Much more to come on Blue Cross Blue Shield. Cubs post game live.